how's it going? Uh, I'm just sitting out here this morning reading from uh, our third chapter in John today. And uh, John chapter 3, it's a pretty popular, pretty famous chapter. It contains, um, well, it's, it contains John 3.16, right? I mean, everybody's seen that, that verse. It's plastered all over the place. You know what? If you pay close attention to a lot of professional uh, sports games, um, there's a guy that goes around to all these games and holds up a John 3.16 sign and tries his best to get in, get in a shot uh, sometime throughout the game. But John 3.16 is, is pretty pretty famous, right? You A lot of you probably know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But don't forget about John 17. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Jesus came here to rescue us. He didn't come here to judge us or condemn us. That's not the goal of the gospel. That's not the goal of Christ. He has come here to save us. And Jesus illustrates that in John chapter 3 with a with a story, but he only mentions it briefly. And if you aren't paying close attention, you might miss it. But in John chapter 3 verse 14 it says as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will so whoever believes will in him have eternal life. And when I read that this morning, you know what? I honestly I couldn't remember the story. Uh, so I, I googled it, Moses lifting up a serpent, and it led me to Numbers 21. And in Numbers chapter 21, you see the story of when Jesus, or not when Jesus, but when Moses lifted up this serpent. So he made a bronze serpent, and he put it up on a big stick, right, so that everybody could see it. Uh, but what happened is God led Israel to some pretty amazing victories, and he had just led them to victory and they had made a covenant with God if you would lead us to victory then we will we will basically be obedient to you is what they said if you if you will indeed deliver us into into victory then we will always be your people and uh, so God did that and then the people went on journeying through the wilderness and they got disgruntled and they started to speak out. It says they started to speak against God and against Moses. And they started grumbling. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? This food is horrible. Which this was the food that God himself was providing. Uh, he had brought them out of Egypt. He had saved them. He had been protecting them. He just gave them victory. And here they are grumbling about where they're at and where God has led them. Uh, just super unthankful, super ungrateful. And I'm sure that in their hearts... In their minds, they were starting to wonder, maybe Egypt could offer us something better. Maybe we shouldn't have left that old life, right? Maybe we should be living like everybody else because, well, everybody else seems to have it, and here we are in the wilderness. And so they just became ungrateful. And so what God did is it says in Numbers 21, verse 6, that God sent fiery serpents out among the people, and it bit the people. The serpents, the snakes bit people, and it killed the people. And so then the people started to cry out to God again, Oh God, we have sinned against you, and we, when we spoke out against you, can you save us from these snakes? And so Moses interceded for them, and, and it says that God heard their cry. And so then what God does is God removes the snakes. No, that's not what God does. That's the amazing part of the story to me. God doesn't remove the snakes from among them. He leaves the serpents and instead gives them a cure. So he builds Moses makes this snake and stands it up and it, every time somebody got bit if they looked at the snake then the bronze snake then they would be healed and they wouldn't die and so what what they basically were doing is god was saying no the, those fiery serpents are going to stay among you right in other words it's a constant reminder that you know what you could go a different way you could live a different way you could get disgruntled you could become ungrateful you could go and try and find life somewhere else but there's all these snakes around there that are going to bite you and that are deadly. And the only way you're going to be protected from them, the only way that you're going to find victory and healing is by looking to the looking to God's provision for that, which is what that bronze snake symbolized was God's healing power. And so they had to trust God, something they had stopped doing. And I thought, man, that, you know what, that's, a, that's an awesome challenge for us. Uh, we might not have literal fiery serpents crawling all, all around us, but there is certainly tons of stuff in our life that can suck the life out of us, that can, that can destroy us. And really what the people's problem 
the, the problem that Israel was facing, it really wasn't even the, Satan, the snakes. It was their heart attitude. It was their ungrateful heart. It was the lack of realization of where their provision was coming from. They weren't trusting God anymore. That was their problem. And so he built that bronze snake to remind them, no, you've got to trust me. There's always going to be things in life that will destroy you, but you've got to trust me. And that's the, that's the ultimate message of John chapter 3. That's the ultimate message of John three sixteen and 17. We have to look to Christ. We have to look to him to find the healing that we want. We have to look to him to find the life that we want, right? I mean, he's the only one that can provide it. There are all kinds of things in our world. And you know this probably even better than I do. There are all kinds of things in our world today that will suck the life out of us, that will destroy us, that will kill us, that will just take us down a road we don't want to be on. And the only way that we can find healing or victory over those things, the only way we are ever going to live the life that we really want, not the life we think we want, the life we really want, you know, the abundant life, the life full of love and joy and peace, is if we look to Christ. And he has been lifted up on a pole for us. He has been lifted up on a cross for us so that we can have that victory. I am praying that you make that decision for Jesus today. Uh, that if you've already made that decision, that you recommit yourself to that decision. That you recommit yourself to the Lord. Just like the Israelites had to do in Numbers chapter 21. Every time they looked to that snake, they were reminded of the power that God had and the victory that God could give them. Let's look to Christ today and be reminded of the victory that we can have in Him over sin, over the, over the hard things in life, the evil things in life. The only way we get through it is if we keep our trust and our faith in Christ. So believe in him today. Look to Christ. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow for John chapter 4.